world. What up everyone? Welcome at the Art of Coaching podcast in the... Boy, I, hear, I hear you very soft. Yeah, uh, that's Joey. because the clapping. No, yeah. in general. Compared to Ralph, you're soft. I'm, I'm soft anyway. So. I'm, I'm super hard. You're super hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow, new record. Not even not, uh, more than a minute. So, okay, Ten shameless seconds. plug. Onlyfans.com slash Ralph from Base Checkers. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's nudes. Exactly. Uh, how uh, how have uh, you guys been? Good. Yeah? I think this sums it up. Yeah? The sun, the sun is up or sums it up? No, this sums it up. I'm uh, holding a thumbs up right now. Oh, nice. Where are you right now, Ralph? I'm in my second home with a big ass B behind me. Um, a B? In Spain. Yeah, there's a bee flying here. Or a wasp, I don't a know. A bee or a wasp? The waspinator. Oh. How is it called? Wasp man. How's the weather over there? Because I heard it's not that great. Uh, it's really great. Hmm. What's the temperature? I'm sitting here in my shorts and my t-shirt on and uh, my cool uh, loafers. And um, no, it's it's like uh, 24, 25 degrees. We did have some uh, rain uh, this morning, but for the rest uh, this week, I've um, had nothing but sunshine. I've been in the sea and in the pool and uh, was uh, up on my surfboard and uh, life is good. The guy is a nice. tough life. Tough life, yeah. How about you, Jay? Yeah, I have been doing good. Uh, we just survived Amsterdam dance event, uh, which was very fun. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be back in the studio because all that talking about... Uh, Bullshit. <laughs> Talking about music is just boring. I want to make music, man. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. how was? How did you like it? Uh, I liked it a lot. It was. Um, it was fun to. Uh, yeah, I, I realized like in COVID that a part of my friends are DJs. You know, because like I have friends at home, but also DJ friends who I usually not see often. Maybe on a festival, but now I don't play that much festival. So then it's like. It's very fun to see everybody during uh, ADE. And um, yeah, I did uh, three little shows, uh, which is, I think, the perfect amount. And um, yeah, it was just very <coughs> fun. I don't know. I just uh, talked to a lot of people and saw friends. And um, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, it was kind of relaxed. I don't know. I, I was busy, but not too busy. Yeah, same. And we had this this event with this joey guy and it's like Tough the lunch viewer. and there was this dj called uh, danique or Dan something <laughs> danique <laughs> uh no but that uh, our um uh event artist coaching uh, event was very fun i think um yep. i i was i i had a show after otherwise it would have stayed longer because there was a lot of fun um you stayed till yeah, the end uh, right yeah till the end but then of course you then the mingle starts mm. <laughs> And before that was the munch. True. So, uh, <laughs> and True. also this whole week, last whole week, I heard a lot of people who are like, oh, I listen to the podcast. Hmm. I think at least like 20 people, which is like a lot from 20. Well, uh, yeah, something like that. That like, doubles yeah, our listeners. Listen to the podcast. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah, good week. Okay. Okay. Good week. You know, it's funny. Dude. That's cool to hear. Yeah, it was really fun, uh, Ralph. Hello, listeners. Hello, listeners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have been there, but uh, yeah, I had to uh, be here. It's. Uh, but um, I saw Danik uh, was a great uh, replacement. Yeah. And uh, and I saw the photos. It all looked really cool. Yeah. The Munch, Munch looked cool, and the mingle too. It was really fun. I actually just emailed uh, the venue to um, reserve the date for next year. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. We need a bigger I, venue, though. We well, I did, I did ask them, like, what are the upscale versions? As in, um, <clears throat> this was kind of the max that we could handle there. Like, they, they said we could go up to 50. Mm. But I immediately said, like, I don't know if that would work, you know, because that would mean an extra table. And uh, I don't know. It's um, 
an extra table man that's quite a hassle yeah in that space it's quite a hassle it's it's not too uh it's not too much but um we'll see but you know uh what you just mentioned was something i, uh, I didn't like the podcast that that good man it was a little bit boring yeah that's because you were i missed me yeah. no i actually <laughs> liked it a lot and i listened to uh the most part of it i didn't uh, listen to the whole thing yet but uh, it's really cool to have the interaction, the, the questions, and uh, well, we got some cool good setup. questions. Yeah. We got some really good questions. Yeah, the questions were better than the answers. <laughs> exactly. I, I I often didn't even have an answer, <laughs> but it's like it, it, some of the questions are also like, um, uh, should I do this or should I do that? And it's like you can basically make a point for both yeah. options in that case. So it's like, yeah. If we had all the answers, we wouldn't be doing this podcast and we would be like Ralph, yep. uh, just Sitting chilling in, in our, our second house in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> with a B. Yeah, you know, and also with a B, did you say? Yeah, with a B behind you. <laughs> oh, no, I thought you said with a B. Well, you're yeah. actually right. Well, yeah. uh, hey, 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 I just, uh, oh, there he is. Mm. Like I saw Lion Harris in the chat says, where's the signature San Miguel? But it's, uh, what is it? Estrella. Oh, it's San Miguel. Oh, it's San Miguel. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm a man got... of tradition. So we've got drunk Ralph uh, again. Nice. Mm. It's only my first beer of the day. I'm planning on to do uh, we, ten we more. St- no, we actually still don't, don't condone much. drinking, but we I actually... love a a sponsorship with the zero point zero San Miguel. So uh, San Miguel, if you're oh, I actually like zero point zeros. Yeah, quite a lot. I've tried, and also I, kind I saw of... this in. I kind of feel like I've tried them all and I'm always disappointed. I have one, uh, a dose of Hertog Jan uh, at home in uh, Holland right now. And they're really amazing. I do notice here in Spain, they don't do 0.0 at all. Yeah, it's a, That's in most countries. Drink. It's really, it's really yeah. a Dutch thing. Yeah, we're weird people. And also I saw in the news that they didn't like the... Um, uh, that there was uh, beer or wine on the table at all the talk shows. Oh, really? So it's like, yeah, so I'm being like going against the stream and uh, we are streaming. drinking a beer. Cheers. Yeah, alcohol, alcohol is the new uh, cigarettes, I think. Yeah. I think we're going to realize more and more how bad an impact uh, alcohol has on your health. Uh, but then again, I always think live a little, so, you know. The live problem is it's social glue. As in, um, it, it really is part of the lifestyle which brings people together, like f- with dinners and yeah, it, it's so. I, hard I think to... it's in a way good because you're like, partly you're like, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna be in full control, and I mm-hmm. think every every once in a while that's a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't per se need alcohol for this, uh, but yeah, alcohol can help. So definitely. Perfect. And I see um, Josh is in the stream. Actually, he, oh, was, yeah. uh, he was at ADE, Ralph, so you missed him. I know. I saw the pictures. Yeah, Melodramatic is here. Marco Velper, what's up? Lion Harris. Welcome, everyone. Um, what I wanted to ask, Jay, because you mentioned it, and I think you guys could, you guys <clears throat> recognize this, is uh, I was talking with a client last week, and he mentioned that um, most of his friends became colleague friends during the the success of his career and now he kind of was surrounded with friends from the industry and and not really talking about uh friends from back in the time back in the day again how how is it for you guys i don't know what the question really is well, like the, big, yeah. the bigger you get and the more time you spend in the music industry as an artist um the people you work with also become friends tend to become friends in some oh, like, like like we definitely. for example like we for yeah, example yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. so how do you experience that because that might be slightly different than a lot of other businesses no i don't think so colleagues become friends and um uh... It's just that people you talk to on a regular basis can become friends. I think it's, uh, and it goes for everything. Yeah. You, if somebody who works in a, in a, in a store and uh, stuck with uh, a lot of the same people every day, day in, day out, some of them you're stuck with, you tend to like, and some of them, them you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that I don't see many friends hanging with colleagues. Maybe that's it, but. 
Yeah, um, it's actually a good point because I also don't uh, recognize uh, that. Yeah, like, some do, some don't. Like yeah. we we say in our in our spare time, we tend to say, "Hey, let's do a barbecue. Let's have a drink. Let's are, are you in the studio for a coffee?" Like those type of things. So it really become friendship. I do have to say your cooking skills are really on point. If you didn't yep. have those, I think we would uh, be together a lot less. You have to bring something. And, right? uh, yeah, Jay, I just get along the way. So <laughs> he's, comes just, with the he's yeah. just always there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just there, man. You can't remove me. I'm going to be always being like, oh, we're having such a good time. Oh, Jay's here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> the food is nice. Hey, Jay. Uh, hey, can you... Uh, we need someone else for the football team. Maybe Jay uh, is a good option. <laughs> and everybody laughs and just like not even really answers the question. Everybody just laughs and moves on. Yeah. We're like the first <laughs> AI. <laughs> J.I. <laughs> J.I. Oh, oh. Nice. Uh, anyway, uh, as always, we uh, there has been something going on in the group chat during the week. And one of the things that were sent was the post of David Guetta. Yeah, I, I, I actually thinking was uh, the 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 former question. What unites us, what is different than other people, is that we uh, are united through something we have a passion for, and I think that's different than somebody who works at a fabric that makes uh, lawnmowers. You know, <laughs> super specific. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like i think you choose your friends or you maybe you don't really choose your friends on based on you have the same interests so i guess that's why no, some we, we these... can talk about music for days and that unites yeah. us but yeah they are there the one likes uh, hockey the other likes football yeah. what what actually unites them is lawnmowers and the selling of lawnmowers <laughs> but they don't really like lawnmowers true yeah that's true so, yeah, but that's why some the, colleagues you might click with because you might have a connection. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. But you see, maybe a little bit less. It might be one of the. But Ralph, there's not yes. not everybody in the industry has the passion for music. That's what you where you got it wrong. <laughs> some <laughs> some people have a passion for money. It's a really different thing. That's true. That's true. But that also unites because <laughs> there's a lot that <laughs> like the money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I I always say there's like um there's there's two types maybe of artists there's Group the ones, ones that are like rich ones no the passionate ones oh. who really <laughs> follow the passion and make that the priority and there's like the entrepreneurs who don't really care too much about like the, their passion is more in like um, um making uh, yeah how do you say building their themselves as an artist and looking at, and building, at the success. Building, yeah. success, yeah. building success building success yeah so but that's it's it's i i can get along with uh, with both and i i respect both as well uh but it's it's um it's funny to see that everybody has their own approach anyways um, yeah but this is the, the the endless well not necessarily a discussion but there's always two yeah as you mentioned the two types and i i also recognize when i talk to people like you're either someone who's super passionate about music and is not really willing to uh, sacrifice on that. Um, and you have the artist who is more entrepreneurial and more like uh, commercial. And yes, the music is important, but you're flexible with that, right? You're, you're, uh, it, it's not a, hill, mm. you'll yeah, die it's not, not a black or white issue. It's, uh, there's yeah. a lot of different shades of gray in there. There is true. What's up, Jamie? What the, the Geta post. Yeah, yeah something um, with Geta. I haven't seen yeah. it. Uh, Jay, um, Jay sent it, I guess, right? Basically, he's saying like um, what he does isn't DJing. It's it's purely entertaining and also saying that's how the scene now works. And what I thought was interesting is there's one um, very interesting thing he says. I'm not exactly sure exactly the quote, but he says something like, if you want success... That's the way it is now. You got to be an entertainer and not so much a DJ. And I think in that word, success lies the whole thing, what he's saying, because I, I think not all DJs are looking for the same type of success he has. Wait, let me uh, grab and that post so we can check it together. And the audience check what he says. Knows, what uh, is success? Yeah. And the audience. Yeah, what is success? And, and like what is success for him is, is being uh, every way, week in Ushuaia and Vegas. 
uh, maybe for me that's not success. And I think that's where you have to always. He, it it sounds like go. he's kind of assumed. Oh, here we go. Our profession. One is an entertainer. Agreed. This is mainly what I'm doing. And the other one is a DJ, which is taking people on a journey, showing them new music they don't know from other people. When I play my show as an entertainer, 95% is my own music, almost like a concert, but in my own way. If I look at all the successful shows that we have now, and it doesn't matter what scene we're talking about, people are not dancing anymore. You have people that they come because they're enjoying the music, they're looking at the show, they want a full production. Most of the time they're filming. I don't think that's DJing. I think this is entertaining. I'm going to say something maybe a lot of people would. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like I think he, he says, if you look at the successful shows, and I think in his head, <clears throat> A successful show is a show that generates a lot of revenue and is in one of the big clubs or venues. Um, and that's, to me, is that it's a little bit funny because I think if I play for 300 people, uh, like during ADE, I play small shows and they know all my music, to me, that is a successful show as well. So I think that's where the, what is a successful show is something that it's not like, oh, that show sells out so then it's a success and otherwise not i think that's where you really have to look for yourself what you want yeah what is success for you like ralph said um but it's interesting to me that he said if you look at the successful shows people are not dancing yeah well then in other people's eyes that's not a successful show so maybe, i think it's uh, maybe with a successful big show he means like the the big like stadiums right like the the, the very big venues yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, is that then a success? No, people to, are not to dancing. Him, I mean, because as yeah, you, to him, well, yeah. as you mentioned, him, well. like, uh, <laughs> as you mentioned, like a three hundred person show could also be very successful and and very fun, and you can you can see people dancing. But what I do agree with, I think it was this video as well, uh, because I have, we I guess we missed the short part, but um, I think he also mentioned that a DJ kind of tells a story throughout the whole night with this music and that the entertainer is more about like the show and the visuals and, and the pyro and those type of things. Um, and I, I, I thought that was an interesting take as in separating the two as in the DJ in this dark cave with, uh, with like smoke and a, and a stroboscope and just, just all about the music and no people videotaping or whatever but just dancing and the other one is more like uh disneyland as in it, it's an experience right it's it's something you go through um and and kind of yeah I'm not sure if i make sense but give it yeah it's, that's more like giving people what sense. they want yeah you're probably i think i think he sees like uh djing is hey taking people on a journey and saying like hey here's um new music and like it's, I'm going to surprise you. And the other one is like, hey, they just want Disneyland. They want, this is what they want. And you give him that. And I think he sells himself short a little bit there because when he's planning a set based on all his experience, he's also thinking about, hey, what can we do to surprise a little bit and here and there? So it's like uh, he's selling himself and, and uh, short saying he's not, a, not DJing. But um, yeah, in general, I... Uh, I think he is more an entertainer than DJ, but there's yeah, still he, definitely I mean, DJ aspect in it. Yeah, he's definitely not wrong. I mean, we all see it happening, and uh, there's a lot of uh, people have a lot of issues with people not dancing. I gotta say, uh, David, if you're listening, uh, you always can uh, get a few bass checkers records. <laughs> they make people dance, no problem. Jump and um, yeah, jump. Whatever now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you just see it happen. M maybe also sometimes it's kind of weird. I mean, visuals, they have taken, taken off. They look insanely good, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially animals like the front runner uh, of that. Eric Pritz. Tell, but... tell of us, of Eric Pritz. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't dance either. I mean, it all looks so cool. Uh, yeah, you, you'll forget to dance. 
Yeah. You can ask yourself the question, do we want the nice visuals? Um, I think especially artists like uh, Geta, they can also choose yeah, to make true. people dance. I think that's and, actually an interesting um, take, you know, like what if you would take a, what as an art, uh, if you as an artist would decide, you know what, I'm going to take out the visuals, I'm going to take out the show elements, would that automatically uh, make people focus on the music more? I guess it does. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, if it works that way, but uh, one can uh, try or think it does and uh, yeah, or make the visuals be more about uh, making people dance than and now yeah. they are also made to record and made to be yep. spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how social media works. We're, we're all aware of it. We play that game as well. And um, the guy who did my visuals, uh, Auke Kruithoff, big shout out. He, when we were designing my visuals, he's very uh, clear about like it's smart to like because I was like sending all these examples and like a lot of like light on your screen and he's like yeah but you have to imagine you're in a club there it shouldn't be all like pictures or all like a full animation you want also some kind of like darkness in there so not to distract fully from yeah. from the um uh, from the dance floor and from the experience but then that's uh, what we're saying now is 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 changing a little bit if you go to high ibiza and if you see videos from there it's really like a lot of light and a lot of just it's like almost watching a sort of a movie and i'm very curious to see what they will do in the vegas uh, sphere uh with anima um yeah. so that that is changing uh but i what well, i but, always but like is, is anima when... is it a dance event or is it a that's that, yeah that's a an game experience wrestling. a visual yeah. experience yeah that's yeah, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with both being both or being something not being something but yeah. yeah, you can ask yourself that. Is the world not evolving? And and is it's a just dance a different, event still? Uh, different thing. And 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 the nice thing is, I think there that there's room for it too. Uh, but what I always love is when you have great music and the visuals enhance that experience. And I think that's why Eric Pritz, um, I've seen him a few times live, and I remember one time in Miami, you had this like this tent with visuals like all over the top. Uh, like like LED screens, and then there would be this build up of a song, this progressive song, and it would just like get brighter and brighter <clears> with some sort of orange and like patterns. Not even like uh, like the the hollow stuff he does now, but it was so like until the build up, it was so powerful. You got like more euphoric, and it got brighter and brighter, and then in the drop, it just like flashed and got dark. And yeah. that's what I think is is also amazing because then you enhance the music. Mm. Um, and you're still not exactly sure what are you like you're not looking at a uh, a big <laughs> spaceman on on the back because then i yeah also wouldn't dance you wouldn't be looking at the no i also remember spaceman. excision you had the, the the robo kitty or something and it also was really cool and excision, excision was really early on yeah he's so like a dubstep artist uh, mm. i think from the states and uh yeah he also Ten years ago already, he made insane, insane. Uh, he did insane shows. It looks really cool. But and I, I think his visuals really added to the experience. Yeah, I think you uh, you've got a point there. As in, what what I know from my like when I got uh, got into the nightlife, I, I I must say like you had those old school clubs, you know, like just a dark room with music and the DJ was somewhere in the back and nobody was really paying attention to the DJ. Um, and I really like that because that was more about the music and now all the elements that kind of have been added over time during the past, let's say 20 years, um, are all, well, can be some sort of distraction if you're there for the music, you know, uh, it really depends on what your, what your goal is. Because if I, if I'm going to Tomorrowland, I want to I want to be entertained, right? If I go to the main stage, I want to see everything explode and move and like I, I that's what I expect if I go to a Tomorrowland. But if I go to a club show, me personally, I would prefer like a trimmed down version of a set and just solely be focused on the music. Um, but it is something to think about as an artist. Like if you add visuals or if you add anything to the show. Is it an is it a distraction or does it add to the to the music? Like, does it enhance the music, as you say? Hmm. I think it's a good point. 
Okay. Yep. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's it for today. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Bye. So, yeah. um, <laughs> another topic that came through. Yeah, I just said I just said a, a quote. Yeah, exactly. Like a statement, and let's see uh, who agrees and who uh, disagrees. So, is my techno statement. the new EDM? Yeah, I, I said this in a group chat. Techno is the new EDM. And what I mean by it, I've seen, uh, especially during ADE, I've seen um, uh, festivals and DJs that are deemed like underground or credible, name it however you want it. Um, and they are like making the audience clap. They're using the microphone. They're playing hits that are sang along by all the people in the crowd. And I, I mean, I, I, I love it. Um, but I, I feel like us EDM guys, let's say it, or we got shit for it 10 years ago <laughs> because it was so cheesy. They took and now jobs. I see, it, now I see, yeah, put your hands <laughs> up and clap your hands. And, and now I see it happening in the credible scene. And now all of a sudden it's, it's like, oh no, we, the, the, it's cool or something. It, it's to me, it's just funny. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, and all the hits being played. I mean, I never heard so many hits and. Uh, at, at credible, if I won't name any artist name, I won't name any events, but I just I, I just see a little trend um, that some un, underground ish stuff is becoming more mainstream and and, and um, um, more popular. And I just thought it was a fun trend, and I wonder where it's uh, it's going. But this is the the my conclusion: techno is the new EDM. <laughs> well. I can I can see where you come from, and I I, I think I can slightly Luna. agree with it. As in, <laughs> it is the new trend, obviously. Especially uh, th that's definitely something that became clear to me over the past few weeks. Spending a few weeks in Amsterdam, like I'm in the south of the Netherlands. I live in a bubble. I don't see many clubs anymore, so it's I don't really have a good temperature of what's going on uh, within uh, within the club scene. But spending a few weeks there lately. I must say it's all techno, you know, it's all techno related. And um, it, it kind of looks like what happened to the EDM bubble in 2014, as in everything was built around something and things got crazier and crazier. Um, th this is what you see with Verknipt right now, the festival, like it seems to be like there's no boundaries. So I wouldn't be surprised if this stops somewhere within the next few years. and. If we look back and say like, oh, that that was a trend, like uh, that was a big bubble. EDM bubble, isn't that a track of somebody? Uh, EDM bubble stream now. Uh, it has a lot of streams <laughs> on Spotify. Uh, Mike Savella, Jared, <laughs> follow up. Thanks for bubble. streaming. <laughs> Thanks for streaming. Yeah. yeah. No, but I don't think it's the same as back then. Back then, it was all big room, more progressive. And uh, you heard uh, yet like uh, like EDC Vegas was maybe four stages and two of the biggest stages were all of the same music and everybody played the same music. There were even sometimes at certain festivals, uh, also a lot in China, that was a little bit later on, but also in, the, in all parts of the world, uh, flyers handed out of tracks you weren't allowed to play because they were played too much. Um, don't think it's like that. I do agree with Jopke. Um, like every scene, also like house and uh, also techno, there's a lot of uh, remakes of old successful hits being played all throughout. And uh, some uh, get shit for it, and some are like applauded, which is weird. Um, yeah, not consistent, but that's that, how that's it's my been point, all, all yeah, that's how it's been always. And um, yeah, <clears throat> I know the thing is, um, the it, all the sub genres or uh, all the like the cool kids are like this natural, uh, um natural uh, outcome of an equation that's always there they they do their exact part like they're supposed to it, it's they're not like uh, individually different than all the others and then you have the people who just step into edm and they do their part and they like the more cheesy stuff and 
and everything has their own reaction and it uh, it has been like uh, the same always and the equation always balances out that the supposedly cool kids they bash on the shit of others and the new ones that just enter they divide in uh, they uh, they enter into a certain sphere and then they go in the one then goes to techno or house or whatever and yeah i don't think it's different from yeah 10 years ago or something and mm -hmm um yeah i think it all balances out in the end and uh yeah uh, people always have their opinions uh, ready uh i when, think when we're we, few... yeah if we would play the, the same record then uh uh then somebody who's new hip and happening they would perceive it differently yeah, and that's how yeah, it yeah. always has been. Yeah, exactly. That always has. But been. I think we're a few years away from like animals and tsunami being played at, uh, let's say, awakenings or something. A few more yeah. years, and then it's like, uh, oh, it's a classic, man! It's a classic. <laughs> no, but awakenings, yeah. I mean, that's a prime example of something that was very underground. Hey, um, yeah, I. I I actually forgot the name, but da -da 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 -da. what's it called again? Was it Rave Nation? Uh, Zombie Nation. Kellercraft. Kellercraft. Yeah. Zombie Nation. And, uh, Zombie Nation. Yeah. Zombie Nation. That's being played a lot there. And uh, we actually got shit for it. When it was like, or everybody got shit for it because if you would play that record, that's just too easy. And, um, and you, you can hear it now. Um, yeah. Actually, that takes the specialty of a certain genre because if you. Uh, you don't want to use uh, such weapons too much. But on the other hand, when it's introduced by one DJ, then the other one will do it because, yeah, you're not... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you also want those trumps to uh, work for you, not only for the other ones. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> But in the end, it all comes down to the same thing. We all want to be entertained. And uh, yeah, we shouldn't uh, give a shit. If you're not entertained, you're not entertained. And uh, don't be too judgmental about uh, how others are, are entertained. Point. Does that sound wise? That very sounds wise. very wise. It's uh, the beer. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, dive into the, into the questions. By the way, if you're watching this live, you can leave a question in the YouTube chat and we'll uh, pick a few of those. We have one in the Discord. Let me check. Um, question from EMK. Uh, actually, a question from me, you, and Ralph. One for me, which is I've been joining this DJ Academy to learn how to DJ. Any advice how to get that first gig? Um, well, Ooh. a gig is kind of the last stage that you, uh, that you will get <clears throat> as an artist. And I understand that most artists focus on those gigs at the beginning because that's the end goal. But there's a lot of steps that need to happen in between before you'll actually get booked for who you are. Like you can you can go to a local club and ask to play there. That's something different. But you probably won't be able to play the music you want to. You have to play the music they that they want to. Um, if the goal that's how you learn the most, though. Yeah, true. But if the goal is to eventually get booked for who you are and what you do. And then there's a lot of steps involved in between, as in building your brand, building a fan base, releasing your music, like a lot needs to happen, which probably will take a few years uh, before you'll even get your first booking um, for as, your, as you as a person. So depends on what the goal is. If you just want to get booked in your local town and play whatever what everyone wants to hear, then that can happen next as early as next week, if you're lucky. Uh, but if you want to get booked because of who you are and what you do, then it it, it requires a lot of work. Unless you guys agree, disagree with me. Uh, fully agree. I fully agree. Okay. Question to Ralph. I've been wanting to make some bootlegs of songs, but every time I look at the DAW, my progress is slow. Any advice on how to speed up the process and overcome creative blocks? Ooh, that's like a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what always happens for uh, if works for me is sometimes you're just working on something and you you just don't know how to proceed. And maybe it's the arrangement you don't like, or you're at a certain point. Okay, like what do I do now? And um, yeah, 
uh, just listen to other stuff and uh, how others that you uh, like uh, solve their uh, issues. I listen to a lot of different music uh, of different artists uh, that are doing kind of the same thing. Um, and I listen to them a lot. Like sometimes I'm just working on something and like, okay, let's see how he or she uh, uh, solves uh, this uh, thing. And how, how is this uh, track actually going? And yeah, I think looking at others actually really works. Is is that like a productivity hack that you have for yourself? So maybe you you give yourself two hours to ramp out the whole arrangement or something? Um, no, there's no specific hack because every project is a little bit different. You don't even begin the same way uh, all of the time. Uh, but if you're doing bootlegs, yeah, you, you kind of already have a theme. And then it's like, okay, let's say you're only using a vocal that's eight bars. Then that's one theme. But you know beforehand that's not enough to carry a whole uh, track. You know you need to have another theme going, uh, whether it be uh, the melody of the top line that you're using uh, played with a synth. Maybe that's not even possible. Uh, and you have to create your own melody. That's actually always uh, more work. It's actually also... Uh, we pick uh, which bootlegs we do based on the the number of themes it already has. It's like if it's like a hassle to uh, come up with a lot of new themes for it, you might as well just make an original, uh, mm. you know. And um, yeah, let's say you're doing a bootleg of um, uh, that you have that uh, Amelie. Amelie, Amelie, Amelie. Then you only have that vocal to go on and nothing else. You yeah. have to create a lot yourself. That's harder than like when you say make a bootleg of uh, I'm Blue. Um, I'm Blue, double D, double D. Yeah, you can play that melody also with a, uh, with a synth. And that makes it more easy to do a bootleg of I'm Blue, double D, double D, than you know, make a bootleg of Amelie. <laughs> And yeah, this is this is a great work for clip. <laughs> yeah, I'm blue, da da da. I'm blue, da 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 da. I'm a scat man. That's also a good one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can put the lyrics in the in the caption. Yeah, with lyrics in the caption. Like, that might work. Ralph has a new idea. You see him. You see his <laughs> brain no, going. No, we just actually already clicking. have a remake. We already have a remake of uh, Scat Man. And. Um, but well, we just did blah 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 of uh, Gigi D'Agostino. Which one? I don't know that Something one. Something like that. Is, it, is yeah. that also in that? Uh... Oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and then Gigi. we, we Gigi. actually searched the lyrics on uh, on internet and it gave up. Something oh, up, like that. Up, that. That's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great vocals. Yeah, they are. And actually, yeah. cool uh, if you see how we uh, sampled it <laughs> back in the day. Here's a, here's a question for Jay. Um, first DJ gig won't be 100% great. What should I prepare in order for me to at least maintain 50% of the crowd on the dance floor? Um, well, it, it all depends on where you are DJing and what time and what kind of event and what, what other DJs are also DJing. And this is all stuff you should find out or, or figure out. Or, um, um, I think if, if, if you're the type of venue and the type of party, that's, that's the first thing you want to figure out. You want to figure out, do I need all kinds of music? Do I only need house music? Um, if you have that, then you can get a kind of a picture of what type of music you need. Then you want to figure out, A, is, 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 is it going to be a commercial crowd or not? And you need options for both in, always, I'd say. So you need some, some hits in there. You need some mashups in there. You need some maybe unknown cool music in there um, that, that fits the vibe. And that's all stuff you, you, yeah, you kind of have to figure out. Maybe you can ask the one who is booking you, ask other DJs at the club, ask people who've been to that club. Um, I once made the mistake of, um, I played in uh, Brothers in Bunnik. <laughs> I don't know if it still exists, but to me, that was like a like a big thing. And it was before I was was anything, because before that, I only played in uh, at Hart van Drunen. 
<laughs> but I was like, oh, that's a big nightclub. So you play nightclub songs. So I was like downloading all this music, all this quite credible um, dance music that I thought was going to be very good there. And then I start and all the crowd leaves. And after half an hour, the resident comes uh, up and he's like, yeah, it's not going very well. Huh? It's not <laughs> going very well. I'm like, no, what am I doing? He's like, well, this is a very commercial crowd and like, you're not playing any hits. And it was kind of funny. And um, well, I, I felt like shit, of course, but the guy was actually very nice. And um, But then I realized... I didn't do any real research about that club. So I just figured it's a big club. So they play club music. No, I had to do some more digging. I had to ask my friend who also played there way more about what type of music do they play there. Um, and I still do this now. If I like last uh, Sunday, I um, actually had to substitute for Denik uh, in Club Prime in Amsterdam because he last minute couldn't make it. So they asked me. Uh, for Grimmix and Friends. And I um, immediately, my head goes to, okay, Club Prime. And I was there last year, which is the luck. Um, but then I'm like, oh, Club Prime. I know what the DJ booth looks like. I know what the club looks like. So that's already giving me an idea of what to play. And then you think of the crowd that was there last year. And you kind of go on that. Like, I need a bit commercial, but it's ADE. So I'm playing a bit more my own stuff and I can play a bit more new stuff. It's all those things that come um, uh, into play. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it comes down to just research. And if you're at the gig, just enjoy it, man. If you've done your preparation, that's all you can do. If it then goes to shit, don't worry. Uh, we've all been there. Uh, but just try to try to enjoy it and show that you enjoy the music that you're playing. Because this also this is a bit of a long rant now, but uh, um, one one of my first um, in Drune, one of my first gigs outside of the bar was like this event um, uh, locally, and they were like, it was like they had a DJ stage and some other art things. It was very um, a local thing, but there were like five people maybe in that hall, and I was DJing, and I was like so focused on DJing that afterwards my dad said to me, he said. Yeah, it looked terrible, man. Uh, you're not even having fun. <laughs> and like he said, yeah, the DJ before you, he was really showing like he was having fun. Like you were just sitting there like, uh, <laughs> like, and then I realized like, yeah, but I was having fun, but I just, I wasn't showing it, it and I was so nervous. Yeah. And that's such an important thing as well as a DJ. You don't have to move like, uh, let's say Martin Garrix moves because he's, he's like naturally very energetic, but show in some way or form that you like yourself what you're doing you like what you're doing that's actually um, um, like what you're playing that's actually um, part of the most of the feedback i always got from people what they liked about my sets is that they just really felt the energy of because they saw me enjoying it that was yeah. that was catching on on them that they felt like yeah, oh yeah yeah you know like uh, i i i i think that's also within people you know we like watching people who are very passionate about something uh, mm -hmm. And if you are behind the stage delivering your music passionate and you can do that in a Martin Garrix way, like jumping up and down, or you can just do it on your own way, whatever you prefer. But as long as you deliver the message, people kind of tend to feel that, you know, it's a certain energy that you bring into the room. It's a good tip. Yeah. Enthusiasm sells. And it's also why I'm not on stage. It will look very boring. <laughs> and uh, Self-knowledge. Enough said. Yeah. yeah. Okay, question in the chat. Um, blah, blah, blah. What would be different ways to get playlisted on Spotify outside of SubmitHub? If you knew, you would know. Well, you can pitch to Spotify directly. That's something. You yeah, can... but who knows how it works, man? Don't get me started. It's a shit world. <laughs> <laughs> We just open a can of frustration. Yeah, we have drunk uh, Ralph on the phone. It's a Let coincidence go. game, man. They, uh, yeah, people, uh, I mean, they're a bit of gatekeepers. Um, they're all about data. It's data driven. It's not about the music. If you're uh, a no name, it will be harder to get the playlists. You either have to get some virality outside of Spotify and uh, sell it to Spotify that it will be in their best interest to uh, give a spotlight on your track. Um, 
But I mean, it's it, just think of it. Not all the big DJs make great music all the time, but their music will get a spotlight all the time. Hmm. And it's through the data that they will lose the spotlight. So if it's a shit track, it won't do so well because they will lose the spotlight at some time. Uh, at, at some point, because people just will skip the track. Um, <clears throat> uh, Spotify uh, wants people to be on their platform uh, the most of the time. And, um, yeah, most of the people aren't invested in music. Uh, they just, uh, yeah, they scratch the surface. And uh, that's why bigger names will sell easier than the smaller names. Um, yeah, and it's how it works. Uh, you have to work hard to be uh, to become uh, one of the big names, but it's also, as you notice, a little bit frustrating um, because if you do get the virality on your tracks, yeah, it doesn't say anything. And then um, what's also frustrating is when you see a lot of your own fan base play the track because that's also not uh, always the case. But when you do see it, it's at that point that Spotify will say, think like, okay, let's playlist and see how other people will uh, react to it. But it's, it just makes you tired, you know. You have to prove so many things before you will get the favors. And whereas others who made it at some point or I don't know what, they will get those favors uh, more easily. And, and that will, uh, then the status quo of people who are big uh, will stay big, uh, yeah, that will uh, stay in place uh, that way. The self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. Yeah, it's it's how it uh, works. Yeah. And I mean, if you're a big artist and don't get a lot of plays on your track, man, you feel big time, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, it's Although, like Mike. Po yeah, if you like, like the track Posner. yourself, it's okay too. Hmm. Mike it's Posner. like Mike Posner from uh, Took a Pill to Ibiza. He said like <clears throat> when he just started out, he had like a triple platinum record. So it wasn't too much about streams yet, but sales and streams kind of same. Was that before um, and I then, took a pill? Well, so some of his records, one of his records um, mm. went um, uh, triple platinum or something. And then uh, the next record and the one after that went only one time platinum. And then the label was like, hmm, this is a the decline. <laughs> so they kind of like stopped uh, uh, paying real attention to him. And that's the same with... Uh, um, yeah, like Spotify, if you score a hit and it's like the next one doesn't do as well, it's 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 always a decline. And then they look at the numbers and go, oh, well, that's a decline. So that's, uh, and then it just yeah. can go downhill from there. You know, you know and I, 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 to be honest, I can't even blame Spotify. I get it. They also have a business to run and uh, they're not the promoters of music. What I do uh, are, what I'm really displeased about is whenever a track of yours does well, there's a lot of people, of the distribution, the label, whatsoever, standing in line to say, hey, look at this success. Look how uh, well we did. And when it doesn't Proud do so well, team. hey, <laughs> and then, then they're quiet. And it's about, yeah, the weather was not in favor of the track. And uh, yeah, this and it's all these external <laughs> things. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, and, but it's just a coincidence game, especially when you're not one of those. I mean, we make a, a bit of harder style music. It's not uh, per se in favor of streaming. We get that. I know it. And um, so uh, if Spotify thinks, hey, we're not going to play this page checkers or may only in those lists, uh, uh, we're a bit of a niche. Uh, and then you get uh, not so many streams. I get it. But um, it's just... Um, the labels take 60% or more of the chunk of the pie of the revenue. And I cannot rectify that anymore because it's such a, uh, it's such a coincidence game. Hmm. Then you might just, and that's here, here it is, self-release. Hey, um, hey, there we go. Hey. And, I missed my, uh, yeah, I missed my and, IQ. Yeah. No, it's too long. The sample of the club. Oh, you can stop I it. I can stop it. Yeah. <laughs> but they do have a fan base, most of the labels, and uh, it's always wise to tap into that. But I wouldn't uh, sign a um, a um, 
how do you call it, um, an exclusive deal with a independent label. Yeah. Because yeah. they cannot guarantee you that they will get the streams. No, exactly. It, like, it, it and just, not the, much. The amount of clients that I have who come in and say like, I finally signed that spin in, for example, after years of working uh, to get there, I finally signed there and now I'm left with this 10,000 streams on my track. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Okay. Um, I get it, but still, I mean, <clears throat> to cut some slack for spin in or whatever, uh, label, uh, yeah, it, that's not how it works. And uh spinning would only be in the wrong if they would say sell you that it works to sign with them and you will, will get the streams but mm. they also just don't know and in my opinion the whole uh, system that you sign it away for 12 years is just wrong yeah. because if it doesn't get streams they will just do nothing about the track anymore and yeah. maybe no oh now it's recording stopped Due to uh, incoming Rob call. Stop, but I, I think you. Oh, there he's back. <laughs> Whatever. Is he TikTok, back? you know. Uh, am I back? Yeah. yeah. Did you get an incoming yeah, no, call? Yeah, yeah I, get a, I got an incoming call. Yeah. You you said uh, you said something about uh, if the streaming doesn't work, and then what? No. Let's say you sign away a track. It's for a minimum of twelve years, usually, maybe even fifteen or twenty, and. Uh, if if you don't get the streams, they will do nothing uh, about the track anymore. Maybe it will resurface at some point uh, in a dumb TikTok or whatever, and, and it will become a hit. Um, <clears throat> but that's something you don't know. And and I'm I'm sometimes I'm actually uh, convinced that my music will work. And let's say a year later, some music is just more timeless than the other. But then your rights are gone. You can invest yourself in the music to be heard. But why? I mean, they getting a 60% chunk of the money. And, and that's just a wrong dynamic, in my opinion. And, and that has to be uh, renewed. That if a track, I tried yeah. it already, but it didn't work. But if a track will fail or you get a, like a, a, a performance quote in there, like, okay, uh, can you guarantee me to get 100,000 streams in one year? And if they say yes, and they will make it, they can uh, uh, have the licensing for yeah. 12 years. But if they don't make it, give us back the license and we can market it ourselves. There is a, I think partly the reason is a financial one because <clears> I think <throat> there's always like um, certain revenue streams and also in publishing that they're not really allocated to certain tracks and there's just money being left on the table. And then the more tracks you have in your catalog, the more part of that chunk you will get. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be part of big labels just keeping all their catalog in, even though it doesn't bring in any money. Mm -hmm. um, and also the fact that you always... just don't know something can resurface at like yeah. Yeah, say four also years. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, I agree with you, Rav. It should be like, hey, you tried your best, spin in or whatever label for two years. It didn't bring any revenue. Now let me take. Yeah back control and i'll do yeah. it myself because to be honest spinning, uh, but... uh, i mean our best streaming tracks are spinning tracks wrong or right and eternity so get bad mouth uh, spinning to be honest we have a good uh, no 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 it's uh, not it's not so much spinning it's more like the 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 industry has is working in a way that could could change or would, would be better for artists if it would change definitely yeah, yeah you know sure. that when we got uh, in the dj mac we also got a question which was interesting by the way and that was, should uh, producers be rewarded more? And, uh, for? Yeah, for their work. I actually thought it was okay. interesting because for me, that's a non-issue. Apparently, it might be an issue because or else DJ Mac wouldn't ask it. Um, but yeah. I, producers and then ghost producers. Or... Yeah, ghost, go, or yeah. Hmm. And uh, Yeah, well... Depends on on how they make money, right? For you, it's probably different than for many other ghost producers. Definitely, but... I, I do. I, I mean, sometimes I'm also a little bit fed up when we do a, a co-production. That, uh, but yeah, I, it's it's the it's same. Always a hassle to it's, get it's your money. Also, it's always the way the world works too, though. Like <clears> you know, the the the, the nurses in the hospital yeah. deserve maybe the most money, but they the, the CEO of the of the hospital gets way more. Uh, and he doesn't even see patients, for example. Mm. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's partly the way the world works, 
but that doesn't mean that uh, we, we should still keep talking about it. And um, so it is also by DJ Mag. That's a good, uh, good one of them to just Question. bring that yeah. into the conversation a little bit. By the way, congrats, sure. Ralph, entering, uh, what was it, 44? 44, yeah, yeah. Where's the claps now? Ah, oh, dude, I'm missing my cues yeah. all the time. No, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> um, no, I'm very happy with it. And um, it's, uh, we, we, we were 31 last year, so we actually dropped 13 places. But um, still, I actually like uh, being N in the producer top 100. And this one kind of gives a consistency in there. We're doing something right. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Nice. Congrats. Although it's weird. I dropped it, out, yeah. man. Oh, you dropped out? What? Fuck. I dropped out. Yeah, man. Oh, then unfortunately, we have to let you go. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not more part of the. Yeah. You have to change my bio everywhere. That's it. No, yeah. I was number 100 last year. Uh, <clears throat> and I mean, uh, this year I wasn't also. Uh, um, I didn't release much. I didn't tour much. Uh, also because of my second kid. So it's also kind of a thing where I, I expected it. Um, and I'm what i really am happy with i'm super <clears throat> motivated now yeah uh in the studio so next year top 10 is is the, it's the goal it's the predictions yeah. that uh no, I, I do yeah. my dad actually <laughs> asked me like uh he, he looked at the top 101 uh, producer list and the top 100 and martin garrix was number one uh, of course and uh i think he, he is one of the uh, uh most popular one if not the most popular one and then he asked me like why is he somewhere number 80 in the producer list and the guy who's number one there john summit he didn't even heard of and um but i said like that he's one of the he's he's the coolest kid right now and he does really well and uh i would go to a show of him i'm a fanboy and uh but it's it's actually funny how that works like john yeah. summit was like number 80 in the dj mac and <clears throat> that gives it but i i like the existence of both list and maybe we need even a third one for something like best life uh yeah dj skills yeah or i don't know what and um but i do like and that's why best social I, media <laughs> yeah yeah <but> best content <laughs> uh, best no, yeah, DJs. But yeah. it's just funny that uh that the uh, list because dave getta is i think number two in both of them or yeah, he's on top mm. of the list. And uh, so sometimes your productions and what you, the music you make doesn't mean uh, that it will get you the popularity and uh, or the support True. you get. And uh, I guess what I, it, it's fun because popularity isn't really a thing you can, can put into uh, numbers, which is always funny to me because John Summit may be the, the biggest name uh, uh, at the moment. And then in, one of the biggest popularity contests, uh, DJ Mac, he's number 80. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really mean per se anything. It means uh, that a lot of people uh, voted for Garrix, um, more for Garrix. Uh, but it's, that's what I also like. It means that for me as well, like I'm not in the list. But it doesn't mean I'm I'm not relevant. No, no, and that's, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, the biggest take, because uh, guys like Mark Pay or John Summit. <clears throat> They should be higher than us. Let's be honest. Dom Dola, they're on fire, and uh, I love them. As I, I look up to them, uh, well, what they do right now, uh, quite a lot. But they are below you now. Yeah, that's weird, man. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, but still, I'm, I'm very happy, and also that we got both of the uh, nomin- or the both of the results because that that actually shows that okay. And we're also making a little bit of harder music, so it's a little bit harder for us to get in a top 101 uh, list. And uh, and we also got the DJ Max, so I'm, I'm happy we have uh, both. And it's not a simple uh, popularity thing also. It's also just hard work. <laughs> just hard work. It got the results. Sweats. Yeah, that's nice. And I'm very happy with it and enjoying it. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's it for now. Is there anything oh, to show? No. Um, <clears throat> Loads. Well, uh, I was uh, in the supermarket. <laughs> no, I don't know. 
Well, so Miguel, yeah, nothing. that's very nice. We can, uh, so Miguel, okay, yeah, nice. We're searching for the 0, 0.0 version now, and there's always something uh, to show. Uh, we have uh, a lot of new releases coming up. And next week, we have uh, the one with the alarm clock, Wake the Fuck Up, it's called. It's been uh, viral Dude, uh, on TikTok. In my experience, that track has been out for three, for four <clears throat> months now. <laughs> no. no, we actually played it the first time. Might even be uh, Tomorrowland. Yeah. Last year. Ages, no, ages this ago. Year, this year, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I actually posted a clip uh, this week <clears throat> of Marlon playing it at Lake Dance last year, May. That was 2023. That was when one of the first versions of the track was made. And it, all, it got released right now, last two weeks ago. I've seen yeah. that clip of that alarm clock too many times, man. Yeah. I'm already done with the, with the song. Yeah. I um, <laughs> I do have something to show. Uh, another shameless plug. Uh, my alias Eggboy has a new track out since the 18th. It's called Feels Good. And we're number 17 trending on uh, Instagram Reels Yay. already. Oh, shit. Nice. But uh, yeah, that's funny. I think my last EP, everything went... Uh, um, oh, now I'm out of focus. Here is the focus. It's not it's no gone. anymore. Yeah. Uh, but the last EP, everything was uh, in the in the popular list in Instagram. Yeah. And we're continuing that streak. So awesome, it's, man. Uh, it's pretty funny. Nice. When do we nice, get our nice. first Egg Boy show? <clears throat> uh, Tomorrowland oh. Main Stage 2025. Hmm. That, that the first fun. lo-fi hip-hop yeah. artist opening, on, uh, the, opening main the main stage in lo-fi. Put your fucking hands up! Hands up, hands up! That would be fun. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, everyone who's listening right now, if you're not a part of the Artist Coaching Discord yet, make sure to join the community. Uh, the link should be in the description. We have a community going on there with uh, 543 people, DJs, musicians, artists from all over the world. We're still in the 500s, uh, man. Yeah, it's hard, but you know... It... Also, yeah. also, if you're listening rate this episode like this episode follow us um, comment, whatever share platform it, listening on get some more people comment in there, share man. yeah yeah i know there's a lot what of we, new, what people gonna... making music you know what, what i'm gonna, gonna do send as well, back by to the everybody way. who sends me a promo listen to the podcast yeah, go to the discord yeah yeah like just auto auto reply yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool I, I think a podcast is low um <laughs> how do you say low um Bar. Easy to, to start. No bar of Easy entry. to follow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, True. That's okay. uh, would be smart. Hey, there he goes. <laughs> he thinks it's three o'clock. The yolk is ready for the afternoon. Over yes. time. Over time. <laughs> hey, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.